Hi there, uh, my name is Ryan Tyndale and I am a teacher in Southern Ontario, just outside Toronto actually, in one of the big public school boards. And I love using technology in my classroom and I wanted to share a, a way to use technology for assessment, for the purpose of assessment. And the, the type or the, the name of the technology is using a Google form. Um, I have a bit of a cold, so you'll have to excuse me if my voice sounds a bit uh, funny. But um, my, my curiosity and my fascination inside of teaching largely stems from technology and how technology can be used to rouse the curiosity of kids and students. So using a Google form as, a, as an alternative form of assessment, you know, taking away or adding it to a traditional pencil and paper type of activity, I think is pretty cool. So there are three types of technology that I am making videos for actually. Uh, the first is the Google Form, which I'm doing right now. I'm also making one for Kahoot.com or getacahoot.com really. And the third one is uh, for Socrative.com. And the three, three websites are three ways to assess students. And I'm writing the three of the, writing about the three of them for an article that hopefully will get published uh, soon. And if it does, I will put a link at the top of the screen. And once the other two videos are made, I will put links to them as well. So uh, what I want to look at with you is how to make a Google form. And I'm on my main Google homepage here. So I'm going to click on uh, my Google Drive account. Okay, you need a, a Google account, which you set up when you register a Gmail account, which is Google's email service. Okay, so once you have a Gmail account and you have access to Google, you then get a cloud and your cloud storage is, you know, replaces your traditional USB, which in turn replaced the DVD disc and then that which replaced the CD disc, which replaced the hard disc which replaced the floppy disk, and then there were other disks, I'm sure, that uh, were alive before I was born. But um, those, are the, those are the three, uh, or rather that, that's what the Google Cloud is for, okay? So Google Drive is, uh, Drive is Google's cloud storage. So to get there, once you set up your account, you're going to go into Google Drive. And when you go in there, you have access to Google Docs and some of the apps that they offer as well. So if I click on New, uh, to make a new document is, is very similar to Microsoft Word. To make Google Sheets, it's very similar to Microsoft Excel. Slides would be PowerPoint. If I go down here, Google Drawing would be your traditional WordPad and Google Form is where I want to look at today. Okay. So I need to name my form. A form is basically your assessment, your test or your quiz or your questionnaire. So I'm going to label that YouTube sample 246. Okay. Uh, there's the name up at the top. Question one always has to be your name. Super important. Okay, and I will tell you why in a few minutes. I'm going to make that a text answer. Okay, and there it is, question number one. Add another question. What is two plus two? I'm going to make this one a multiple choice. Okay, option one will be two, three, four. Click done, and there you go. What is two plus two? Let's add one more. The cheetah is the fastest land animal. We'll just make that a statement. We'll make that true, false. Okay, done. Let's add one more. This time, instead of clicking add item, we're going to click on the little drop down arrow. You can do a, a short answer or a, a one word answer. You can do a paragraph, multiple choice, which I've shown you, tick boxes, giving the students more than one possibility and choosing from a list. So let's do a tick box one, check box rather. Um, what is the weather outside today? 
sunny, cloudy, cold, hot. And now students can choose that it is cloudy and hot or cloudy and cold. They can choose more than one answer. Okay. Uh, we'll stop there. If you want to add in an image, okay, that option is available for you. If you want to add in a video, like a YouTube video or something, you could put in a video of an experiment and then you could, below that, you could put in a paragraph text and you could ask the students to respond to that image or that video rather uh, and write the lab, write up the lab or something like that, okay? I'm going to stop here, okay? I'm going to send my form. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so I'm done my quiz, all right? And I want to send my form. What this basically means is I want to give students access to this quiz, okay? And to do that, I need to create a link, which they can then go and access the quiz. Now, before we send it, I want to show you how to change the theme, okay? Here's your basic traditional theme. I could click on any one of these and it just changes the format of it, okay? Now I can hear some of you ooing and aahing right now, and it is pretty cool. This is probably the favorite part of my students is choosing the theme, okay? I can't edit my questions here. I have to go back into edit. I can move my questions around if I want. You know, it's completely up to me, but that's the theme. If I want to view the responses, this is going to open up another window, and it will take me into a Google Sheet, an Excel document. All right, so let's go down and send the form. Now, for students to access this quiz, they have to enter in this long URL, which is really crazy. You know, I'm not going to ask them to do that. If I shorten it, that makes it a lot more accessible, okay? Now, if you have a teacher page, you can just paste that link. You know, you can keep it long. You can paste that right onto your teacher page, and students can access it no biggie. But if you are asking them to do this in class, they're going to have a really challenging time with that. So this short URL is a lot more accessible, but I like to shorten it even more than that, and I want to show you how. If I go to URL shortener, here is Google's. Bitly is the one I want to show you. You have Owly, and you have Tiny URL. You've got Trim. There's a whole bunch of them, okay? Bitly is the one that I use. So how you shorten that, you don't need an account for this, and that's important to remember. I'm going to copy, I'm going to paste, and it squishes it. So it takes something that is goo.gul slash form slash 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It shortens it down to bit.ly slash, and then you get seven characters. Okay? Seven is a little easier than ten, in my opinion. Copy. If I take this copied link and I give it to my students, I put this up on my whiteboard, this is how they get to my, my quiz. But I'm going to do one better, and I'm gonna, I have an account with Bitly. Uh, no personal information is required except your email. I can customize my end. So I could do something like YouTube sample 246. If that's available, I've now squished it to bit.ly slash yt sample 246. And the word is a lot more accessible than seven characters that are very case sensitive. Okay? So, check this out. I copied it. I'm going to write that up on my board. Little guy's going to go to his desk and he's going to write down bit.ly slash, you don't need the beginning, uh, yt sample 246. They click that. That takes them to the quiz. Ta-da! And there it is. Now, I'm going to show you how to do the quiz. Okay. I'm going to split my screen here. I'm going to kill this guy. And I'm done. Now, watch this. I want to go back to my responses. So I've opened up a new window. I'm now in my responses. Timestamp is first. What is your name is second. The questions are down appropriately. Okay. I'll give you a little hint. If you press control A and you copy all of it, if you click on this little wrap here, that wraps them into one column. Just a hint, tidbit of hint. 
Okay. So let's go ahead and answer it. Now, this is you're the teacher, right? You're sitting at your desk right now. And you've got 155 students doing this quiz at the same time. All right. They go ahead and they answer it. They submit their score at the bottom. It is done. My computer is slow. I am done. It says here, your response has been recorded. You can go ahead and submit another one if you want. But you can see right here, it took the timestamp, took my name, took all of my answers, and it put them into the quiz. Okay, next person comes up. So we've got Allison. Okay, and Allison goes ahead and answers the quiz. Two plus two is four, true. Uh, it is cloudy and sunny. That's kind of weird. There's Allison's mark right there. If you don't put in a name, okay, and they leave that blank, or sorry, if the student leaves a blank, or you don't allow question one to be a name, you are going to get an, a quiz or a form that has no name on it, all right? It's really important that you make question one a name. Otherwise, you're going to get some blank quiz from somebody and you have no idea what it is, okay? If you want the form to mark for you, okay? You can go ahead and put an add-on called Flubaru. It's up to you if you want, but uh, Flubaru will mark for you. I don't use it personally. But this is your timestamp here. Uh, these are all your questions here. If you have any questions, you can go to my website, teachingsmarter.wix.com slash home. You can write me a message down here. Uh, if you are looking for more information on uh where is it right here uh three fun ways to assess i will put the link to the article on my website as well once the article goes live okay but anyways that uh i hope it has been helpful for you please do go ahead and check out other videos uh you can subscribe to my teachers pay teachers account as well if you're up for it uh, that is right here. I have a Teachers Pay Teachers store. Everything in my store is free. I've got over 1,200 downloads currently and 43 people following. So go ahead and follow me if you're up for it. Uh, all the resources in there are free for you. And uh, my website is there. Uh, please go ahead and check out some of the other Google Form videos as well. If mine hasn't been sufficient for you or you still have questions, uh, please go ahead and check one of the other ones out. Okay? I hope, really hope you have a nice day and thanks for watching. And again, my apologies for my frog voice.